this episode, we went from Smoky Bay to Streaky Bay. So we're just down at Smoky Bay. We've just had a wander up the jetty and you're probably thinking, what's that annoying beeping sound? So that's the tire pressure monitoring system letting me know that I've got a slow leak on my front left. I pumped it up the other day uh, and yeah, it's slowly leaking. So that's a secondary uh, thing that these alarm systems actually show you, these tire pressure alarms. So this particular model is an eye check. If you want to get one of these, we've got 10% off with them. So use our code SKT10, but pretty much primarily they're for flats. So when you're traveling, uh, letting you know that you've got a flat tire, but also I've got a slow leak, so that's going to get me out of trouble too. Um, pretty handy little piece of kit, so I'm going to mute that now. And uh, yeah, we're going to go get some oysters now, so that should be fun. And we might even do Kilpatrick, but we might just eat them raw, who knows yet. Well, it's still a liquid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they... Uh, so we get them in already grown three millimetres. Yeah. Do they get much bigger than that? Yeah. They do? Yeah. Do they get tough or is that just... Big right now. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so we just went and visited Smoky Bay Oysters and the plan is tomorrow when we go into Streaky Bay we're going to buy the ingredients to do Kilpatrick Oysters. It seems pretty simple, just Worcestershire Worcestershire sauce and um, bacon. Don't know that will add any more salt to them, but we'll see how they turn up. Should be pretty good. Hopefully better than the natural oysters that Danny gave us the other night. So this area here, Smoky Bay, is literally renowned for the oysters. So if you are in the area, you have to come get some. There's a few joints in town uh, that do sell the oysters, but we actually recommend um, Smoky Bay Seafood, where we just were there, because we just waltzed in there as just, you know, random customers and he was nice enough to shuck them for us and also gave us a bit of background and information on the oysters. One thing he did say was a lot of people think that the size of the oyster is how it tastes and the little ones are sweeter, but he reckons that's false. He reckons that the older the oyster is, uh, the more aged and the more flavor it has. So he uh, gave us some old ones, he reckons, and uh, they should be really tasty. I might have one now with some uh, avocado and tomato in it. So if you wanted to get a bag of oysters yourself, I think it was a dozen. So without getting them shucked, it was $12. We got them shucked and everything in a nice little tray and that was $16, so really. Yeah. And he saved us about an hour because, or oh, an hour and a few cuts on my hands because I reckon I'd be cutting my hands with them shark shucking knives, so. <laughs> we nearly like got the cheaper version and then we're like, what are we doing? Let's just pay the extra four yeah. bucks. and. Takes him five minutes, takes me an hour. We're at uh, the boat ramp down here at uh, Smoky Bay. It is howling onshore, so we're gonna go to Point Brown um, around the corner in a minute and show you guys that, but we probably won't do much talking or explaining because it is so windy out here. Uh, yeah, we've just come on the wrong day and uh, there's nothing better to do than uh, sit here, eat some crackers and maybe an oyster. So what I'm gonna do is just chuck a bit of um, avocado in the oyster. I've never tried this before and I've never seen anyone try this before, but I reckon it'll taste really good, this big bloody concoction here and then what I'm also gonna do yeah, that's my tomato oh sorry <laughs> that's Sarah's tomato put a bit of tomato on top like that here we go oyster with avocado and tomato <laughs> that's actually pretty good Super frustrating. We thought coming into South Australia, we were leaving WA and windy always, but it's just been just as windy here. So we're just trying to get out of the wind and it's so hard to do stuff. Like this morning we wanted to go snorkeling at these rock pools and we can't do that because it's just like blowing a gale. So it's a bit annoying, but life goes on. We're not at work. Oh my love. You're such a fragile thing, I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm here at all Trees and 
All right, so for tonight we've got some brioche buns that have been toasted with a little bit of cheese on them. I've got some French fries in the um, pan. Don't know if that'll work. And then we've just got avocado, tomato, red onion, cucumber, um, and then some chicken, which I just seasoned with salt, pepper, paprika, and garlic. Yummy. <laughs> Look at this stuff, guys. We've literally got sand everywhere in the van. Um, it is just an absolute travesty at the moment. Finding it really hard. It's actually coming through these holes up here. It's blowing 40 degrees outside, so we're just trying to seal up this side of the van because the wind is just battering it. So Sarah's got to cook with the door open because it's getting too smoky in here. So we're just really struggling at the moment with the wind on Palubi. It's, it's brutal. Oh my love You're such a fragile thing I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm here to hold Oh, no. Say bye to Gil on the camera again. Bye, bye, darling. Bye. Thank you for having us. Yeah, hold, wait, wait. Thanks for coming to dinner. Thanks, mate. Oh, Come bring it in. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll see you probably tonight down the road somewhere. Oh. Pov cam. Pov cam. Ready? Pov cam. Like that. That actually works. Did it? We'll probably see you in town in the next campsite anyway. Yeah. Just, just, we might, it's just see you later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm lying, and I'm lying. So, we've just left Palubi Beach. We left our friends, Chris and Miriam at ADU. They're uh, back on the beach there. They're heading a separate way. They're going out to some wave rock looking thing. But we've seen the real deal in WA, so pretty lucky to see that. Wait, anyway. What? Sarah hasn't seen the real deal. I haven't seen Wave Rock. Anyway, we are, we've just booked into the Discovery Parks in Streaky Bay, so that should be good. And we've got our oysters in the back of the car there, and we're going to make some, um, some oysters kill Patrick. You definitely have to get some oysters if you're here, uh, and you definitely have to come down to Paluby Beach. This spot is absolutely insane, and uh, we loved it, so... We left Paluby Beach and headed towards Streaky Bay. For many thousands of years, the area of Streaky Bay was inhabited by the Warangu people. In 1627, Dutch explorer Peter Nutz on the Golden Seahorse became the first European to sight the area. A momentous day in history to what soon would become Streaky Bay, a small coastal town on the Eyre Peninsula renowned for its oysters and Streaky Bacon which may not be true. I might have made so that up. we've just left the caravan park. We're staying at the Discovery Park in town there at Streaky Bay. So we've just come out of town. I'm not going to tell you exactly where we are, but I found a wave. And it looks like about half of Streaky Bay have also found this wave. So I'm going to go out for a quick rip and uh, yeah, hopefully get a couple. We're just back at the van now. The surf was alright. It was pretty windy down there. Uh, that spot was actually 
probably the most known spot in the area. I won't tell you what it's called, but we've got back right, and I'm currently in the process of surprising Sarah, so she's buggered off to go to the toilet, and I uh, have a decent shower, so I'm expecting her to be about 10, 20 minutes, so what I've done is I'm dicing up some bacon, and uh, I'm preparing these oysters. So we're gonna have oysters kill Patrick, and with a bit of luck, it won't be oysters kill us. So if I cook everything right, I'm hoping it won't give us bloody salmonella, and um, it'll taste pretty good. So every person I ask about how to make the oysters kill Patrick, they all give me a, a slightly different answer. So some people say put a bit of diced tomatoes and a bit of cheese. Some people just say Worcestershire, bacon and parsley. So what we've done is, We've gone in the middle, we've gonna go bacon, parsley, Worcestershire, and then throw a bit of cheese on some of them and um, see which one's better. Obviously bang them straight in the grill and uh, yeah, hopefully surprise Sarah. So normally on the channel, if you guys are new here, I don't do a lot of cooking. If it's fish, snags, uh, steaks, I'll cook it, but if it's um, anything that's like a homey meal, Sarah will cook it. So it's a nice treat for her to get her out of the kitchen um, and to prepare her some very fine seafood that's definitely uh, way too good for us to ingest so anyway I'll um, show you guys what I do as I make it just now I'm frying off the bacon um, and then I'll prepare it all for it. so I've fried off the bacon I've added the cheese as well and then I've poured a bit of a drizzle of uh, Worcestershire sauce on top you know it. we went the Coles brand one the home brand one it's absolutely paramount that we save as much money as we physically can these are gonna go straight in the grill but first I need a um, just zest up the top of them with some uh, very finely chopped parsley. We did take a shortcut with this one. We went with the um, spiced dried parsley because it's gonna last us a lot longer on the road. So um, I'm just gonna chuck a bit of that on and then I'll, I'll bang them in the grill and uh, yeah, hopefully beat Sarah back from the shower. And one thing that I don't normally do is give, you know, Sarah a lot of props, but there's probably not anyone in the whole world I'd rather travel Australia with. And Sarah does look after me tenfold to what I probably look after her, especially in the kitchen department. So, yeah, so at least I could do is make her some oysters kill Patrick. And, uh, yeah, I hope she likes it. She's not back yet. They're just in the grill. I'm going to give them five to ten minutes before I pull them out. And then I'm going to somewhat set the table and um, try to make it somewhat special. But... Yeah, normally you see Sarah in the kitchen cooking for me a lot, but um, yeah, it's nice to get her out of it and uh, yeah, cook for her for a change. So hopefully she likes it and I can win some serious brownie points. Here you go, my love. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. What do you reckon? Can you, show, can you try one on the camera? I'm very excited to try one, but I feel very bad because last time I tried one of these, natural um danny kindly gave me one and i pulled a face and was like mm, yum and it's a very it's like a delicacy isn't it i think so, so don't really mind all that too that's all we just did washing washing so i feel very rude for doing that imagine if we gave someone popcorn chicken and they'll like ew yuck get into it um i think you got to loosen it up a bit and then just down the hatchet you actually think don't lie to me <laughs> Is it good? I'm going to be very honest. All I can taste is bacon. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> you said to be honest. Oh. Do you like it? Mm. Cheers. <laughs> oh, they're hot. They were a hit. Very good. Well done, Keelan. How many out of 10? Seven out of 10. Like, I would probably cook them again myself, but I wouldn't go out of my way to order them in a restaurant and pay big bucks for them. But if someone bought you them at a restaurant, would you return them back to the chef? No, I would eat them. If someone else pays, I'll eat them. But I won't buy them for myself. <laughs> Entree, and now we've got chicken burgers. Yum. We are the picture of health. We eat pretty good. Bloody oysters kill Patrick, and then... Big burger. <laughs> That's like a two animal bloody feed, that one. How easy dishes too, that just goes in the bin. Wait, three animals.
Good morning guys, so yesterday was super windy here in Streaky Bay, I reckon it was blowing like 30 knots at one stage, so we've come out of the Discovery Parks and we've parked ourselves just out the back of the township here, it's just in a paddock, it's pretty sick, it's $10 a night, bring your dog, doesn't really matter, and um, yeah, I think it's an honesty box system, so we might even stay here tonight as well, um, depending on the wind, we're also waiting for things from the post office as well, so it's a bit tricky. Can't really leave yet, but today the plan is unhook, head out to the, the loop track. So there's two loop tracks out the back of Streaky Bay, and uh, yeah, it should be a good day. I'm pretty sure it's a really pretty spot out there, so can't wait to do that. But how are these bloody galahs, eh? Just while I got ya, these um these DO35 hitches are so good. We're not affiliated with them or anything, but they are really good hitches, so if you get the new van, make sure you get one of these on it. And um, massive shout out to Lifestyle Lap, they've actually given us a DO35 lock. They have a DO45 and it didn't fit their system, so they've just given us a, a brand new lock. Um, they're about a hundred and something bucks, so thanks heaps to Lifestyle Lap. Go follow them on Instagram, they're absolute legends, so anyway, I'm going to get this off and then we'll go cruising. Stop one on the first loop. We've come down this little track and it's taken to this beautiful little bay. I don't even know if it's actually a part of this loop track, but this spot is magic. We it's left easy. our newfound spot that I'm now calling Pretty Woman Running Down Sand Dune Bay and made our way to a little spot called Cape Bower. Cape Bower marks the northern end of Coverset Bay. Traditional custodians, the Wirangu people, called Cape Bower Muna May, their name for a type of limpet. They provided a tasty and reliable food source. Today, they are commonly known as a Chinaman's hat and can be seen clinging to rocks and reefs in the intertidal zone. The first European records of Streaky Bay were made in 1802 by Matthew Flinders. Kate Bauer is named after the Austrian artist of natural history, Ferdinand Bauer, who recorded the fauna and flora encountered on the Flinders expedition. dirty so being in COVID territory now <laughs> really should get rid of it well, anyway comment reckon, below let us know what you think yeah let us know in the comments if you want me to keep the mo um, and if you say that I shouldn't I'll be really offended so anyway we're now heading out to the other peninsula 
So there's two peninsulas, two loop roads around Streaky Bay. So the first one we've just done, it's out near Cape Bowler. That was absolutely spectacular. And now we're on our way out to the further away one. And uh, we don't know what anything to call it out here, but this is pretty much where I surfed the other day, somewhere out here, so. And he's promised that he'll look at the surf and not surf. No, 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 I won't look at the surf until we come back. And oh, then I might surf. It's changed now. <laughs> anyway, we'll show you guys this peninsula. It's worth doing. Um, like I said, windy as all hell, cloudy as all hell, miserable as all hell, but <laughs> beats working and we're out here doing it. So yeah, it should be fun. After having a fun little four wheel drive session, I was confident that I could get the 16 foot urban armor light down there, but Sarah not so sure. Even though the day was cloudy and quite miserable, it definitely showed promise of what it could be like on a really nice sunny day. Some of the pr protected bays in the area looked absolutely stunning, and I'm sure there'd be blue groper along the rocks there. Sorry if I just gave away your blue groper spot in a hunch. We then left Point Westell and headed to Smooth Pool down the road. Sarah went for a beach comb along the rocks and people snorkeled in the little lagoon inside there. Not too sure about how cold it would be today. We definitely weren't dipping the toes in, that's for sure. Thanks for watching our episode on Streaky Bay, guys. It has been absolutely amazing. Such a beautiful coastline. It's a shame that we're here over the Christmas period because it has been, or well, New Year's period, it's been super busy. Um, but I definitely think when this quiet town is more quiet, it's probably somewhere we could live. For sure. Mm. So if you guys did enjoy this episode, make sure you do give it a little like and subscribe. It goes a long way. Also, we have an e-store now. So all our discounts and coupons are now in our e-store. It's not an e-store. It's just like a page with all of our discounts. And there's a link for it in the description. I don't even know what it's called. That's in Sarah's realm. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yo.